I want to introduce Professor Sasha Grishin AM to come and say a few words for us. Distinguished guests, members of the Whammer Board, and it's a wonderful name, Whammer. Yeah, good, nice ring about it, isn't it? Um, artists, they're the ones without the ties or in designer clothes, and everyone else. Thank you so much for inviting me. I, will, I do want to speak actually briefly but seriously and just make a couple of points. In London, at the Natural History Museum, each year they hold the Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition. In 1965, the inaugural year of the competition, they had an impressive haul of 361 entries. Yesterday, when entries closed for the 2014 competition, they'd received some 42,000 entries from 96 countries. This is what's happening to wildlife art around the world. There's been this enormous eruption of interest. Why? Well, to put it simply, and somewhat bluntly, the flat earth lobby, the climate change deniers, and the global warming skeptics have lost. And outside that narrow, close-knit, inbred circle, no one really takes them seriously. While global concern is now focused on our beautiful and vulnerable natural environment. This has become the burning issue of the moment, and one which is defining the 21st century. Wildlife art, in its numerous manifestations, reflects a concern with the environment, and has become a very popular art form. Once the domain of well-meaning Sunday afternoon painters with romantic landscapes, pretty bunches of flowers, and cute koalas, wildlife art in Australia and internationally is now attracting many of our best artists. Today, if you were to look at a list of Australia's top 100 artists, and I've actually just done this, more than 70% of them can, could be described as in one way or another wildlife artists as artists engaging with the natural environment and the creatures which inhabit it. Last time this was the case was over 200 years ago, when Captain Cook, Sir Joseph Banks and Arthur Phillip were all still alive. Australia, can be argued, has had a unique and peculiar relationship with wildlife art in two areas. Firstly, we have an indigenous continuing tradition of art making going back tens of thousands of years, and one which is primarily concerned with the natural environment, and in this sense, with wildlife art. Secondly, almost 250 years ago, at the same time as England was obsessed with dumping in Australia its human refuse, all of Europe was even more obsessed with the collection and documentation of Australia's flora and fauna. Today, both indigenous and non-indigenous artists are increasingly engaged with our natural environment. Audiences for wildlife art are growing at a breakneck pace. And various exhibitions and competitions of wildlife art are attracting record numbers. Australia can no longer afford not to have a centre for wildlife art. Whammer is the answer. Set in the spectacular Grampians, known as Gavard in the local Aboriginal language, is a place of great scenic beauty as well as of immense Aboriginal cultural significance. And it already attracts huge numbers of visitors annually, roughly 750,000 visitors each year. The Whammer Economic and Social Impact Statement argues that a functioning wildlife museum will attract another quarter of a million visitors a year. This makes it into a seriously huge development in both economic and cultural terms. And its prospects for future growth are simply fantastic. I'm excited by the Whammer dream, by the energy radiating from the project, 
and by the idea that all of us in this room tonight have the potential to engage with WAMA at the ground floor level and to contribute to its establishment. Without reservations, I fully endorse the WAMA project and hope that all of you will also feel inspired to support it. Thank you.